No, but thank you. No, God's love. He loves you guys so much. He just pours it out. And I pray you guys felt his tangible presence this evening and his love. And as he pours out the word tonight and speaks to you this evening, I pray you feel that love tonight and what he wants to do in your life. Amen. Thankful that God shows up at Broken Chains Church. Amen. Amen. That you've come to a place where we know that we're going to hear the word of God and we're going to feel his presence. And we want to take it for granted, but we know that he's here and he's going to show up because we're hungry for him and we're thirsty for him. And, you know, when we're hungry and thirsty, that means he satisfies us, right? Because when he, when he says that I'll be the bread, you know, you won't go hungry and you won't go thirsty when you come to me, that means he satisfies us, right? So we can find every area of our life, every aspect of our life where we're yearning or wanting something, we're needing, we feel like we're trying to reach out or have an empty place in our heart or in our soul, whatever it may be, he satisfies. So you have that promise that whenever you need something and you're feeling lack or something, you'd be like, hey, come to me. Whoever is hungry and thirsty, come after me. I'm going to fill you to the full. You'll be satisfied in me. So whenever you feel that and you're like, boy, I just need something today. He's like, come. <laughs> I will satisfy you. Come to me. Amen. And he wants to do that. It, it, the, his arms are always open wide. His door is always open. He's never, it's never closed, right? Amen. So he's always there. So we never have an excuse not to feel that satisfaction, that feeling that God, that only God can fill. It's a, it's a place that only God can place in you and fill you with the joy and the strength and the love and to have you feel accepted it says accepted in the beloved <laughs> you know to feel accepted to feel wanted and to be part of a family and so he will fulfill that every desire that you need it's in him he fulfills you so just be reminded of that i want to share just a scripture tonight before we get started we got a few people that we're going to share some of the words so um, I just want to share uh, one verse with you guys tonight. Um, but Zechariah, Zechariah, not Zechariah, Zechariah 9.12. Um, I want to read a couple of versions of it to you tonight. Let me get my King James here. Okay. So, you know, this weekend we had awesome services, but, you know, God's, I, I've been kind of, Checking out in restoration, God restoring things and getting you back to where you need to be. And, you know, no matter where you're at, God can restore you out of where you're at and bring you into such a better place than you ever could have imagined, okay? And you may think that, well, this is where people see me now. How can I come into a place where I can rise above that and be better and not have, you know, maybe, maybe, pe maybe people see you where you're at right now and you're like, how can I come out of that image? How can I come out of right where I'm at, out of that situation and be restored and come into who you've called me to be and come to that fullness? And so Zechariah 9, uh, 12 kind of touched on this. It says, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. There's always hope in Jesus Christ. And we know that God is a God of hope. And so he's saying, hey, you, you you can be restored. Come on up. You've got hope in me. Come on up and out. And it says, even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee, unto you. So he's saying, hey, I want to restore you. Not only am I going to restore you, I'm going to return it double to you. So you're not only going to get restored. So right where you're at doesn't have to be right where you stay. Amen. You don't have to stay where you're at right now. He will restore you into such a way where it's great, but not only that, but it's going to be double. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Isn't that good? So he's going to render double unto you. So whatever you are, whatever situation, whatever image you think people have of you at that time, maybe you don't even like where you're at right now. Maybe you like the image that people, you know people perceive you're at, and you're like, how can I come out, out of that that stigma right there or where I'm at or come up and out well he can bring you from there and bring you into where he has you but he's going to return it double so it's going to be even more glorious than what it was before amen amen and you can see like with Job you know he lost he lost his family his his sons and daughters and servants and and um his you know livestock and buildings and all this stuff but it was returned to him, and he got so much more was returned back to him. And God blessed him all the more. And it was good, but it was even better than before. Yeah. So just remember, wherever you are right now, God wants to render, he says, double unto you. So hang on to that promise. 
you don't have to stay right where you're at. Don't hold on to where you're at and think this, how can it get any better than this? Or it's only going to get a little better and I'll, I'll just kind of make it through. No, he wants to get you better, restored completely, but then render double unto you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Well, um, that was for free, as pastor would say. <laughs> Got a little pastor in there. All right. Um, I have a sister, Shauna, come up. She is going to be uh, our first one up. So she's going to be, uh, I'll let her share with what she's going to speak with you, the word of God. Amen. Hello. Hello. All right. How's everybody doing? Less than highly favored. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, I'm getting my Bible open. I was writing everything down. I stole one of the kids' drawing sheets. <laughs> <laughs> they were yelling at me in the car. Why are you doing that? <laughs> So we're going to talk about stewardship. That's something that God's actually been talking to me a lot about lately is stewardship. And and, uh, and it's not just with finances. It's with your time with God. It's the gifts that he's given you. It's your job. It's your family. It's every aspect of your life. You can use stewardship in it. You can grow in every area of your life. And God will honor those things. Um and he's helping me steward in, in some areas more than others, but I'm always growing in those areas. <coughs> but one thing, I'm going to have you guys go to Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. See, I'm already messing up. Okay. Everybody there? Amen. Okay, so it says, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. And every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And then he that had received the five talents went and traded it with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained two other. But he who had one received one went and digged into the earth and he and hid his to the Lord's money. So he was even stewarding the small amount that God gave him. So anytime anybody's like, well, I don't have enough. You know, this couldn't even go into tithing. I don't have enough. Well, you always have enough. If you tithe and you give it to God, you will always have enough. Amen. You can't tell me any other way because there is People are still kind of scratching their heads on how my family is working. And it's, and I don't even figure it out, but I'm Amen. telling you, it works. Amen. And uh, when I was reading this, God also brought to me, he, he was also like, think of it as a seed. You know, you put a seed in the ground, and you and you pack it away, and you let time go. And what, what happens to that seed? It grows as you steward it with water and with the sun. And you, and you make sure, like, the weeds are taken. You take the time to make sure, like, everything's working according to that. What happens? It grows. So your stewardship will grow then, and then you'll bear fruit from that that stewardship. You'll bear fruit from your job. You'll bear fruit from your gifts. You'll bear fruit from from your family time. I mean, you'll make memories that that I mean are priceless, you know. And so that was something that he like a side note that he gave me that I thought was pretty neat. I thought I'd better share. And then Genesis two fifteen. It says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So in the very beginning, he wanted us to steward what he gave us. In the very beginning, he had already had it set in, into play that whatever he put us to, whatever will he had for us, keep that in mind, whatever will he had for us, that if we steward whatever, he, whatever path he's given us, whatever thing he's given us and steward it, he would allow it to manifest and it would actually bear fruit for us. It would bear fruit for our family. It would bear fruit in our lives all around us and, and to even bless those around us. I mean, let's, I mean, even if you do get extra money and you don't need it, you can do what you want with it. But, you know, send it to somebody if God tells you to take it to somebody, you know. It's, it's just different things, but mm -hmm. that's one. And then Colossians 3.23. So 
Sorry, guys. <coughs> and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily and as to the Lord, and not unto men. So once again, like I said, you're doing you're doing this for God because everything that we gain is from God. No matter what is, what is given to you, your clothes, your car, your shoes, your food, anything, it is all God's first and foremost. He created it, He made it, and He gave it. He didn't ask for anything in return. He's not asking for anything because you, you do have free will. But I'm telling you, if you do it His way, and He's stewarding you and giving you these things. Like Pastor Tammy said earlier, just you'll you'll start to grow from that, and what you where you're at right now is only now. It's not in the future. He has plans for it to prosper you in the future. You're going to see fruit from that when you steward. You know, you steward your car. That means oil changes, tires, um, wipers, your house. If you know if something goes wrong, what do you do with it? If you need a new roof, you save your money. You steward your money. Get a new roof. And, and you'll bear fruit from these things, and, and, and things will look better, and, and, and it will show, especially as, you know, as, as children of God, you'll, you'll see how much you care for the things that he's given you. And you can actually raise a standard to your neighbors, even, if they need help stewarding something. Proverbs 16, 3. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. So, when I was reading that, that he, he pretty much put the commit thy works is what I was getting out of that. I mean, the whole thing is, is big. But, once again, the gifts he's given you, whether it's painting, whether it's um, dancing, singing, um, I don't know, you could be a mathematician. Any, anything, anything's a gift if you can use it for God. And so, when he says steward these things, you know, does, is a painter a good painter overnight? I mean, you have to take time for that. I mean, you might be better than somebody else because you naturally had a gift for it, but you still have to work at that. You've got to learn how to mix things. You've got to learn how to, to uh, um, there's different brush strokes, there's different techniques. These things all take practice. These things all take stewardship, you know, whenever, like mathematicians. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm not a very good math person at all. I, I use calculators all the time. <laughs> but if I worked at it, <laughs> I could be great. <laughs> I could steward that and be great. And then we're going to go to Malachi 3.10. And it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of the host, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out the blessings, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So, when God's pouring out blessings, is he going to continue to pour out blessings if we don't steward the things he gives us? I mean, really, he's gonna stop because it, it's not that he does. It, it's not that he wants to stop. It's just, he, it's just like giving somebody that you that you care about, a family or, or or a friend. You give them something nice, you know. I don't know. We'll go with shoes. You give them a pair of shoes, <laughs> <laughs> and they start scuffing the shoes up, and you see holes in them within like two days. Are you gonna give them another pair of shoes? Mm -hmm. No, you're gonna let them just figure it out. I mean, it's not that you don't want to help them. It's just. That, I mean, it gets costly after a while, you know? So, it's the same thing with God. If, if he's giving you these things, shoes, clothes, food, if you're not stewarding it, eventually he'll, he'll stop, but not to, not to not bless you, but so that way you can learn how to respect the things he gives you and learn how to grow with the things he gives you and understand the knowledge of what, what he's giving you and that it really, truly is a blessing every day. And then John... 327. And then it says, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. So that ties in with what I just said. You know, everything that we are given, 
we are given from God. This is These are all blessings. These are all his things anyways. He didn't have to give us the knowledge to build homes or clothes or cars. Um, he didn't have to give us the knowledge to be able to learn how to speak each other's languages and to be able to communicate. But he did because he wants us to be blessed. He wants us to not only be blessed, but to bless those around us. And in order to do that, is like I said, when you steward the things that you have with you, then you can bless those that are around you. You can help them learn how to steward. You can be able to bless them with whatever you want. If you want to give them gifts because you've learned how to steward your things. If you want to make them a whole meal because you've learned how to steward and plan accordingly. You, you're able to do these things because you've learned something that 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 is precious and that is stewardship. In 1 Corinthians 4, 2. I'm doing this without my glasses. I wonder why you kept winking. I'm saying, <laughs> my glasses are on my head. I should put them down. All right. It says, moreover, it is it is required in stewards that the man be found faithful. So that means if you're stewarding one day and then you say, eh, I did it yesterday. You know what I mean? Like you just you decided not to do it that day. And let's say you were supposed to get a I don't know. You're supposed to get a tire and you decided to go shopping. Is God going to bless that? He's not going to bless that, actually. He's, he's, he's going to probably be disappointed because the money you should have got the tire, you went out and, I don't know, bought a purse or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, definitely make sure that what you're getting, you don't have to take care of your house. Your car is a, is a part of your house. Your kids... Your clothes, if you need new clothes for whatever reason, your food, your bills, your bills should always be before anything. May, or well, actually, your tithes should always be before yeah. anything, and then your bills. But make sure those things are taken care of first. Your tithe, your four walls, your house, your family. And then if you have anything to splurge, if you choose to do that, you know, make sure you do it in a, in a correct form and fashion. Otherwise, otherwise, you will get into this. And then First Peter four ten. It says, As every man have received the gift, even so minister to, to the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So this ties in with everything that I said. Once you steward everything, you'll be able to bless those that are around you. You'll be able to pour out the same the same blessing that God has given you when you understand how to um, steward the blessings because he's going to start you off small just with anything, you know, because he wants to make sure you're found faithful in these things. Mm -hmm. And then once you once you become faithful in these things, whether it be items or, like I said, gifts or even stewarding, meaning, you know, you you you, uh, you help out with, with church, you help out with anything that God wants you to do and you're, and you're walking in his will, when you start off small, he will let that flourish. He will make that bloom into a into a excuse me into a, a plant that you, that can be used and multiply and be fruitful. And then when you start there in the small things, you will flourish in the big things, and you'll be able to share all those things. And 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 that includes wisdom that you've gained from this to give to people around you. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Good word. Good word. I, I enjoyed that. That was really good. You know, in James 1, 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So it comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. And so just as she was saying, God wants to bless you in your life and everything you have, you know, is for you to bless you. You know, creation... He created everything, and then he created us because he wanted to create everything for us. And then he created us. Yeah. It was to say, "Here's I'm going to have everything planned out for you because I want to bless you. And then he created us to bless us. So everything is for us. But he, And just like she said, you got to be found faithful. But even if you're like, okay, where can I start? Just start with what you have right now. If anything, you can start right where you're at, whether it's uh, your home, your vehicle, your bills, just like she was saying, all those things you have in your life right now, just start there and be found faithful. Amen? And just start working there and find yourself faithful every single day and stay with it. Stay with it. So 
Good word, good word, amen. Uh, let's see, who do we have next? Sister Heather. <laughs> what you guys are gonna get a three full tonight. Wow. Sister Heather Hall. Hello. <laughs> no, that was good. I appreciate that. It was ministered to me too. <laughs> so, um, one thing I want to touch on is God just uh, kind of revealed some things differently to me um, as things that I was uh, reading upon. And it's something that you read all the time, but He gave me, He, what is it that Pastor Brian talks about? You get a revelation and then it transforms you. And so, um, it's getting. Getting back to the basics is, if you want to title it, is getting back to the basics. We all have to get back to the basics at some time, point or another. But we're going to get turn to Luke chapter 2. Luke 2. And we'll, we'll start with verse 40. It says, And the child grew and waxed strong, that means he became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So the child is Jesus. That's talking about Jesus here. Um, so he was here for a purpose, and he grew strong in the spirit. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And then just this is just like a little side note is, you know, God's able to give you all the grace that you need. And it talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that, that uh, God is able to give you all the grace. Well, I know it by heart, but I'm butchering it. <laughs> I know it. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it's, like, it's my, one of my favorite verses. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So he was actually walking that out. He was practicing that here already. But what I want to focus on is also in verse 40, 41 going down, it says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them <laughs> questions. And all, that, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast, thou, um, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not, saying which he spoke, or he spake unto them. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. So what God pointed out to me here is some, whenever you feel like that Jesus is with you, you're like, oh, you're just walking along, you know, you're living out your daily life. But we can get detoured, we can get off track, okay? And, you're, and you still think Jesus is with you. But he can't abide where there's sin. And so they were thinking Jesus was with him this whole time. And then when they, when they looked, they're like, where is he at? You know, and that's with us as well. You know, we think, you know, we're hunky-dory, you know, we get comfortable, you know, with our walk, you know, and we may get off track, veer off course, you know, little leaven spoils the lump. And so then you're like, oh boy, you have to recalculate, get back on track where you were, where, where did you open the door? You know, where is it that, you, that Jesus left you at? Well, he'll never leave her or forsake you, but he can't abide where there's sin. Okay? And so then they started seeking him. Once they realized that his presence wasn't with them, then you start seeking him out. Like, okay, where did, it, where did I fall short? The Bible talks about judge yourself that you be not judged. Okay? And so 
but then it goes further how he was subject unto them. Because of that, he grew strong, in, or he was increased in wisdom and stature and fear with God and man. But we're going to also turn to Second Chron Chronicles, chapter 33. And this is a, a king that ruled at this time that God put into authority. And I think his, his name was Manasseh. It's in verse 9, it says, So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord hath destroyed before the children of Israel. So he was doing whatever he wanted. You know, he was making idols. He made people sin against God, you know, all this stuff. And God was not happy with it. Okay, and then it goes down further. In verse 10 it says, And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought un upon them the captains of the host of the king of, of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And so I looked up what fetters was and like I didn't know what that word meant. It's chains. He was bound in chains up to his ankles. And when you, uh, the Bible talks about, you know, not having an idol before God, whatever that thing is. Okay, it can be just TV, whatever. You know, God's not happy with that. And so pride become, comes before the fall, okay? And if you don't get right with God or, or repent and turn like you're supposed to, God will humble you. And that's what he did to this king. And it says in verse 12, And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew not, knew the Lord, knew that the Lord, what he was God. And so, you know, he submitted to God. He got his heart right. And so God was able to use him. So it's the same thing with us. Short and sweet, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> kind of goes together. Amen. Amen. Good word. There's some... Good work coming out tonight. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Amen. We got one more. Becky, you want to come on up, sis? And she's going to be the last to share. I'm thankful for what God's sharing tonight, so I, I hope you guys can take something away. I'm enjoying it already, what's coming out, so thank you, Lise. Thank you, Lise. I could be honoring and say we save the best for last, but that would not be nice. Pride. <laughs> Pride becomes or comes before the fall. Hey, I was just looking at different versions of that that verse in Second Chronicles about the fetters, uh -huh. and it said they um, they put chains through his nose and his cheeks Ooh. too. Ooh. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I should repent. <laughs> A little tidbit there. <laughs> This whole thing because it, it will actually be here for a little bit but um i i want to share with you uh, the drama team went to litchfield a few weeks ago and heather and i shared some things and so i want to share with you uh what i what i shared with them and um you know as, as christians especially we've been at it for a while and, and maybe i'm the only one in this category i don't know but as you've been at it for a while, you know, you read all the Bible stories, you know, in the Old Testament. And you read all them, um, you know, just the great works that God did. And you're like, oh, that's nice. You know, that was back then, and, you know. And, you know, and so when I when I presented this to um, to the to the crowd there, you know, I, <clears throat> I used examples, some Old Testament examples, you know, like I brought out David and Goliath, you know, and, and you know, we don't see very many giants like that, you know, <laughs> that want to just stomp a mud hole in you, you know? <laughs> and, but, but, you know, but, but God was with, um, was with David, and, um, in, uh, and of course, I'm, I'm referring to, to 1 Samuel chapter 17, which is the story of David and Goliath, and, um, and so, when, when I was looking at this, I, I kind of, you know, I'm like, how big was Goliath? You know, I mean, how, how big was he? So I, I Googled it, and it said that Goliath was nine feet and, uh, and a half inches tall. And let's see, nine Eunice. 
yeah. is, Almost too bad seven. he's not here, <laughs> is seven, he's a little bit over seven feet tall. So, I mean, Goliath had two more feet on top of that. And, you know, God love Eunice, but he's, he's as thin. <laughs> so I'm sure Goliath wasn't that way. I'm sure he's just a very big, massive man. And so, so then I googled like how you know, because it says David wasn't wasn't a very tall man. You know, and how how tall was he? And it says he was five foot eight, which for a man that's that's pretty short, you know. And uh, so, I mean, big difference. I mean, you're talking a four foot difference. You know, I mean, you're talking like a Reese and Isaiah difference there. You know, between the two men. And um, so, so anyway, and we know how the story goes. You know, David. You know, and he. he he got his slingshot, and he, you know, um, and he and he killed Goliath and cut his head off. And but God was with him, you know. I mean, God was with him through that entire time, and and you know, and and David never had any doubt. He just knew that God was gonna was gonna take care of him. And um, so, the next uh, example that I gave him when I, I talked about Daniel in the lion's den, and went through that whole story, and. And, you know, we all know how that happened, but Daniel got thrown in the lion's den, and and, um, uh, and God shut the mouths of the lions. And, you know, that's, that's, I mean, think about it for a minute. You know, getting thrown in a den with lions. You, I mean, you know, we see a bobcat, and we're like, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. You know, and, and I mean, here's all these lions, but God shut their mouths, and God was with him. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God was with them. You know, and these are very big, extreme examples where, where God was with them. And, and maybe we don't kind of, I mean, we don't, right now, we're, we don't fight physical giants, but we do fight giants in our lives. And, and you know, and, and I don't think anybody's been thrown in the lion's den lately, but, but sometimes, you know, you feel like you are. You know, you feel like sometimes you go into work in the situations and you feel like you've been thrown into lion's den or, or family or whatever, you know. And um, and then you know the fire you know that saying you go from the fire to the furnace or the furnace to the fire you know and you know and so but God was with them through all that and, and I promise I have a point just stay with me here and um, but but the point of it was that same God that was with David and the giant that was with Daniel and the lions did and and was with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he's the same God we serve today and what he did for them. He'll do today. I mean, he hasn't lost his power, and he'll do the same thing tomorrow, you know. And sometimes, and, and again, maybe it's just me, but sometimes I forget that. They, they seem like big, extreme examples, but but he was with them. And, and you know, and the Bible says he changes not, you know. So, I mean, he, he'll do the exact same thing today that, that, that he did for them. And another example I gave um, in the Old Testament um, was, um, and Sister Brenda Lacey talked about this a little bit, but Elisha and the, and the widow, and, you know, and about how, you know, her, her husband had died, and she had her, her two sons, and she owed bill collectors, and she had nothing except for this little jar of oil, and she was going to make food, and they were going to die. That was just how, you know, she thought things were going to go. But then Elisha came in, and we know the whole story, you know, and, and um, she went and bought all the vessels, had faith and bought just a bunch of vessels and just poured out the, the one bottle of wine or oil that she had and then sold them and paid off all of her debt. And now that's something we can relate to, right? You know, I mean, who hasn't been in, you know, had bills? <laughs> but that's something we can relate to. And, and God took care of her. God, you know, he saw that and she trusted God and he took care of her. And, you know, and again, you know, he'll take care of us. It, it, he changes not. And um, uh, so then I went on to a couple New Testament examples that, that we um, can relate to. And um, in, in Luke chapter 8, in verses 41 through 42, talks about the 12-year-old girl that that um, that had died. And it was kind of funny because Brother Todd touched on this. I, I had this done before. <laughs> Oh, I promise I did. <laughs> but Brother Todd talked about the 12-year-old little girl and, and about how her father came in and got Jesus. And, and they said, well, forget it. She's already died. Leave him alone. And and Jesus went and, and he he raised her from the dead. You know, and again, that's the same God we serve today. And, 
you know, and it's so easy to forget. We get kind of caught up in our, our, you know, little, well, I don't want to say little, but we just kind of get caught up in our, our own situations and our own selves. And we forget that, you know, God performed just these, these huge, massive miracles. And he still is. He's still doing that today. And he'll do it with whatever comes tomorrow, too. You know, he, he changes, he changes not. And, um, you know, and then there's there's just many 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 examples. You know, just the 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 woman with the issue of blood. All she did was just touch the the garment, the hem of his garment, and she was completely healed. And the one thing that that all these people have in common was they had faith. They had faith in the God that they served. They had faith that God was who He said He was, and that He would do what He said He would do. And there's no difference between them and, and us. In, um, um, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, uh, it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. And, um, and then I want to point out in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And... Um, um, and then I want to leave you uh, with one more verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 19 th through 21. And it says, And to know the love of Christ, which, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or we think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages. With world without it. Amen. Yeah. So what I want to just leave you with is, you know, that, that big God that did all those huge things, you know, all throughout the Bible is still that same big God that's doing huge things in my life and your lives. I mean, every single one of us are sitting here and we can we can talk about the big miracles that that God did in our lives. I mean, look at Sister Joyce. You know, I mean, they mm -hmm. they had wrote her off and told her, well, this is how it is. And she said, no, you know, the word says this and God said this. And, and you know, and, and there she is, you know, and, and she not only got out of a nursing home, but she went from a walker to a cane and now you can't stop her she just goes everywhere <laughs> you know and, and and kevin and bonnie you know i mean you guys i mean you have huge testimonies you know and, and we all do every single one of us has you know and, and i could i don't want to talk about me but i could sit here all day long and just tell you the things that that god has done and, and things that would seem like giants and the lines did in my lives and so i just wanted if i can just leave you with anything i just want you to know that that it is the same God, and He will do the exact same things that He did before. You know, the Bible says He doesn't change, so He's still able to slay the giants. He's still able to shut the mouths of the lions, and He's still able to to raise the dead and, and all that. So, Amen. don't waste faith. Amen. 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 Good word. Amen. I'm getting excited in here tonight. <laughs> Amen. You got something? Sure, sure. Uh, going back to uh, David and Goliath, it was a matter of faith. As David was going after Goliath, he said, My God was with me yeah. mm -hmm. with the bear. He was with me with the lion. You're no different, David, yeah. or Goliath. Mm -hmm. He's going to be with me when I beat you too. Right. So... Mm -hmm. The big story is, don't run at your giants with your mouth shut. Tell him why he has already lost. Amen. Amen. Very good. Amen. Because we're, we're mighty through God. Amen. Amen. We, we can overcome all those things. We speak to those mountains. And they, they shall be removed. Amen. Amen. Those were good words tonight. I'm excited about what I heard tonight. <laughs> So let's see, we could do a recap because I think it was all well put, but let's see what we start. Restoration, God wants to restore everybody. He wants you to be found faithful in the things that he's given you, you know, as you walk in his ways. And then he wants you, as you walk in the, the, the life with him, and when, you know, sin creeps its ugly head in your life and you've opened doors, you got to shut them, you got to repent, you got to turn, recognize it's sin and repent from those things. And you got to realize that God is the God from the beginning to the end. He's Alpha Omega. He is... He is God, and He's going to do what He says He's going to do, and you're, you, um, He wants to do it for every person. 
No one's exempt. He wants to do it for you. And you just have faith in God. Mark 11, 28. Was it 22 or 24 or something? says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. In Mark 11, 22. My favorite verse. Have faith in God. And whatever you turn to, just have faith in God. So, amen. Thank you, ladies, for sharing tonight. It was excellent tonight. And I think everybody can take something away from each one and really get a hold of it. And, and just, you know, meditate on the, the word tonight, this week, as you go throughout your day. And, and do everything that's under the Lord this week. And allow God to change you from the inside out. Amen? Amen. Well, we're going to wrap up. I'm going to pray, and then we'll be dismissed. Good. Amen. Lord God, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for the rhema word tonight, Lord, and God, that you've uh, you've revealed it and you've shown it to us. And Lord, we thank you for the deep nuggets, Lord. Help us to take uh, deep root inside of us, Lord, to heart, Lord, and to really examine ourselves and to just receive it fully, Lord, and speak to us one-on-one, -on -one, Lord, so that we can apply these things to our lives and be more like you, Christ. We, wanna, we want our lives to show you, Lord, to everyone around us, God. So help us to be faithful in the day in and day out and to be those good stewards and to live a life that gives you the glory in everything that we do, Lord, and to, to be the examples in the, the open book, the, the epistles before all men so that people can see you and see the goodness of God and that people would want to turn to you, Lord. So thank you for the word tonight, Lord, and um, we just uh, we thank you for what you're doing at Broken Chains in Jesus' name. We all said amen. amen. Good source. All right, we'll see you guys easy. Easter Sunday morning, invite somebody or many people to come on out uh, for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Have a blessed